how's it going? I'm Casey Martin from Wine Country Pens and Wine Country Woodworks, and this is going to be a video on me making a sweet knife handle for this Damascus steel knife you see in front of you. So the blade itself is really, really sweet. I'm actually super stoked to get a little more into knife making. I ordered a grinder and a couple of the other tools you need to make knives from scratch. So clearly, as you guys can see, I'm not making a, the whole knife from scratch in this video. I'm focusing more on just making the handle because as a lot of my subscribers know and past viewers, I love making this hybrid wood and resin material. And so I really wanted to make one of my own fixed blade knife handles from it. So that's kind of the purpose of this video to kind of show how cool this stuff can look. And I also really wanted to make it myself and um, to also tell you guys that I'm going to be getting more into making knives from scratch. So I plan on definitely sharing those videos. So hopefully you know everybody will be interested in those definitely let me know what you guys think I think it'll be pretty fun you know it's definitely different in a lot of ways than making pens and things like that but of course I still plan on using the resin casted blocks and all of that cool stuff for the handle material so right now what I'm doing as you guys may have been able to figure out is I am five minute epoxying these handles onto the blade. Now definitely the most strength or, or I should say the strongest way to do this is to use epoxy but also use pins. There's pin or holes drilled into the blade to uh, stamp or you know hammer essentially steel or some form of metal pins through but I have found in the past that if you're using five minute epoxy it's really strong enough. I'm sure there's going to be some people who know a lot more about knife making than me who will comment and explain to me why it's not necessarily true. But considering I'm not going to be, you know, using this for super heavy duty tasks and if I do sell it, I'm going to be selling it, you know, with the buyer acknowledging that, you know, there it was just epoxied on. But I really, really do think that the tensile strength, according to, you know, the package of epoxy, is way higher than ever should really be a concern of it ever breaking off. You literally have to take a hammer and, and smash it off. And even then, only portions would crack off. So anyway, what I'm doing right now, because I just kind of glued the whole thing on because I wanted to make sure everything lined up, is I'm going over to the bandsaw and cutting off some of the excess pieces so I can save some time on the sander. And then essentially, after I'm done with this, a lot of the time making this knife is spent at the sander so because of this I sped almost all of these clips up by like 20 times so which is like 2,000 percent um, so essentially I'm using mainly my belt sander and my spindle sander for the curves and I'm also using the edge of my belt sander for some of the curves as well and one of the things I've found lately um, making knives my belt sander, maybe somebody can comment why this might be the case, but I found that the curve on the end of the belt sander, for some reason, sands way more aggressively than the flat. And it doesn't really make so much, too much intuitive sense to me because it's still the same grit of sandpaper. I don't know if it's because the speed is fastest there. That's the only thing I could think of that might make sense. So right now I'm over to the spindle sander. I took off a lot of the meat of the knife and now I'm just kind of making sure I get all the curves as best as possible. At this point I'm getting really really close and it's just a lot of you know checking and going and checking and going until I'm getting close and close and because I'm going to end up polishing this handle so so to such a high grit it's not a super big deal if I scratch some of the metal because that, since I'm using such a high grid, it's actually going to end up polishing the metal a little bit as well. So here's a really quick time lapse I did on my phone of the whole process broken down to like 30 seconds. And it's kind of cool to see it just completely, you know, from the beginning all the way to the end sped up like that. So here it is when it's completely um, sanded to its rough shape. The next process is to sand all of the edges because right now you guys can see it they're just straight edges so that's what I'm doing now um, I'm roughly doing that on the belt sander just to kind of get started and then I'll switch over for all the final shaping with the hand sander 
because the hand sander you're able to get less of straight lines you're able to get more curved lines and you're able to you know take just a little bit off and everything so there's what it looks like when it's um pretty much ready to be finished it, it, it's ready to, or polished i should say it's ready to go through all the sanding steps so the way i finish this is i start with about 120 grit sandpaper and i go all the way up to 2000 I also really quickly wanted to mention I'm going to be doing a 15% off sale on my Etsy as well as my website. It's going to be 15 off sale and I'll put that on the screen right now as well as in the description. And this is just to kind of celebrate all the cool blocks I've been making, all of the new pen blank styles I've been making with the gold leaf and silver leaf, and just to kind of celebrate more people being able to make more stuff. So definitely go check out those sales if you guys are interested in making some stuff yourself. It's going to cover all of the blocks, the pens, anything that's on either the site or the Etsy. It's just going to be site-wide. So go check those out. 2000, you'll see, is a different color of sandpaper. It ends up being the green color. So when I am done with that, I take it over to my buffing wheel. And so we'll get to that in a second. But this is the best finish i found. And I've actually started doing it relatively recently since I got my buffing wheel. And as you guys will see when we get to that point, the resin I use on this is um, crystal clear resin. It's not dyed or anything like that. And this type of finish, all it's applying at the very end is wax as a very light finish. And it's so such a high gloss that it makes the crystal clear resin look perfectly like glass. So I'm starting on the left, which is the Tripoli wheel. It's an ultra high grit um compound you know it's very similar to like triple e ultra wax if you're familiar with that or you know it has the same properties as like an acrylic uh buffing compound they're all very similar in that they have like micro abrasive um grit in in that compound so i'm doing that this is the one that takes the most time because you want to make sure just like when you start with a low sandpaper even though this is a higher grit you want to make sure you get it everywhere and then this is the white diamond and what this and as you can see I went back over there because I was like whoops I didn't get the the end all the way finished so the white diamond what its main purpose is is of course it's a higher grit so it's going to gloss it up more but it also removes a lot of the residue that the Tripoli leaves and that's mainly because the Tripoli is a little thicker so not only does this buff it to a higher gloss but it also gets rid of any of that stuff that might be left over so i'm just taking my time with this making sure i get absolutely everywhere and then once that is done i go over to the carnuba which is the wax i was talking about and the carnuba is a very very thin but very very strong finish you know you don't look at it and you can't notice it's there that's what i mean by thin but it's very strong in that it's moisture resistant. It's very dur durable. That bar of wax I was holding to load the wheel with is super hard. It's like almost as hard as like plywood or, or some soft wood. And here it is all finished up, you guys. I am in love with it. I like this knife so much. And it's my first fixed knife handle that I've made that I'm going to plan on keeping it. But with that said... I am going to put it up on Etsy for sale for a price that I think is is worth it, but also expensive, so that if somebody falls in love with it as much as I do, they can get it, and I can always make myself another, but it'll be at a price where hopefully, you know, you really have to fall in love with it to, to want to get it. So I love the Damascus on the blade. I love the contrast of the gold, silver, and copper leaf, and the Australian burl. And let me know what you guys think. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.